Next question is from Dragon from India. What are the top five must-haves for longevity and health? Are they attainable without spending a ton of money on supplements, gym member memberships, et cetera? Yes. Okay. Health and longevity. Yes. Most of these things I'm about to say are, are definitely attainable. And I'm going to use general categories because we could break down each category and get into specifics or whatever. So I think the first thing is good, appropriate physical activity. Now, of course, we talk about physical activity on the show all the time. We talk about the, our favorite types and what types are the most beneficial, blah, blah, blah. But generally speaking, good, appropriate physical activity. Diet is the other one. So a good, healthy diet. Again, we can get into specifics, so it's much more complex than what I'm saying, but that's one of them. The next one is uh, your family and relationship health. So are you, do you have good relationships yep. with the people around you and your family and your kids and your spouse? That's very important uh, for health. Then there's spiritual health. Okay. By the way, these are all proven. These are all proven with multiple, multiple studies, okay? Spiritual health is very important. Now, people ask, what do you mean by spiritual health? Is it religion? Yeah, that's, religion's one way um, to, to work on spiritual health. It's one of the most time-tested and proven ways, but there's lots of other ways. But essentially, spiritual health is taking that, you know, as, as my friend Arthur Brooks would say, uh, that 40,000 view look at yourself and humanity and the world. It's looking at things from that perspective, that those big uh, thoughts, those deep thoughts, yeah. you know, pondering the meaning of life, and you know, if there's acknowledging a, how small you are. That's it. That's that's that spiritual health, and are you spending time uh, fostering that right on a regular basis, just like you would with exercise, diet, and then your relationships, family, and friends. And then the last one, and then again, this is proven uh, by studies, is to have uh, meaningful, purposeful work. This is actually quite important. Um, in fact, studies show that uh, people's risk of dying, this is a weird one, look this up, people's risk of dying uh, skyrockets after they retire oftentimes. So here are people working a job all the time, wake up at you know 7 a.m., got to go to work, whatever. Then they retire and they're like, oh, this is going to be so great. I don't have to work anymore. Miserable, depressed. And, and depression goes up, anxiety goes up, and, and death goes up because we're, we are wired to feel like we're productive. We have to feel like we're contributing. Otherwise, we feel like like lost, right? So this can be a job where you get, you get paid. It could be volunteer work. It could be whatever, something that you wake up every day and it's hard, it takes effort, but you feel very, lots of purpose and meaning behind. Those, those are the five things. If you got all those and you focus on all those, you have a good chance of better, good health and longevity. Doug, didn't we do an episode on this? Didn't we do... Yeah, I guess we did. Well, <laughs> he always I, asks me these. I, I do. Know. Well, I ask you because I expect that by the time this is over, you'll find it, be, give it to Andrew so Andrew can throw it up in the YouTube. And right now he'll probably put it up right here where you can actually see it on the YouTube oh, channel. Oh, there it is. I saw that. Yeah, hey, I see. That's nice. <laughs> and that's people so can, convenient. Thanks, Andrew. Because we went in depth uh, with this topic, actually. And uh, I think Sal hit on that. Although I will give you something uh, for those that are not religious or spiritual and but would want to, I would say another way to explain a spiritual health for a non-religious person is the pursuit of uh, ultimate self-awareness emotional intelligence um, I think if if the the whole you know spiritual and religious thing absolutely scares you and you and you don't want to do anything like that I think uh, pursuing self-awareness and EQ is probably uh, the same direction that you're totally gonna, yeah you're gonna get in value that you're gonna get from that. Yeah, I think too. I mean, it's it's definitely the relationship, and you've highlighted those uh, studies before. It's just like it's so much bigger than I think uh, society right now even realizes. And this is what worries me the most with uh, the trends of you know the aftermath of a pandemic and where we're all at as a society with you know pushing people away, pushing all our friends, all our family away, masking up, you know, not having those interactions with human beings is really a detriment to our health. And this is something that, you know, it, you think you're, you know, you're protected, you're, you're protecting yourself from, from all these like, uh, you know, invading uh, viruses and things out in the world. But at what compromise are we, uh, you know, like facing in terms of doing that versus like what that's going to do towards our long-term health, uh, and interactions with other human beings. You, by the way, and, uh, this is, uh, I, I heard this again from Arthur Brooks, you can be, alone and lonely and be around people. Mm -hmm. You can be in a city with lots of people, 
but also be very lonely um, and have uh, health consequences as a result. It's funny. I was having a conversation this weekend with Jessica. We were, it was a beautiful Sunday. God, yesterday was gorgeous. Yeah. And I was sitting outside with Jessica and the, you know, we, the baby, you know, went down for a nap or whatever. And we're, we're talking and she's got an interesting story. So I've, I, I've said this on, I've told a long time ago, I talked about, uh, you know, kind of what she did before on the podcast, but she used to travel with the circus. She used to travel with Cirque du Soleil. So she's had the, the amazing opportunity to live in all these different countries. And we were talking about what it's like to live in Spain. What was, what's it like to live in Italy or Greece or some of these other countries. And she goes, it's so weird. You know, it's like, she's like in Spain, they did, they do the siesta, you know? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's weird. And in Italy in the summer, like everybody shuts down in August, everything's closed. Nobody works in August. And they, and, and they spend a lot of time, like lunch will be two hours or three hours. And we're talking about this. And on the one hand, we're like, oh man, you know, you, you could be so much more productive or whatever. And I said, you know, it's funny when you look at the studies on longevity for people who live in these places, even though they smoke more cigarettes and even if they're fat, like Americans are, even if they have obesity, like we do, yeah. they live longer. Why do they live longer? These cultures really value human connection yep. quite a bit. Like yeah. you go to lunch with your friends. It's, it's powerful. I'm telling you in, in, in Southern Italy, if you go to lunch with your friends, here's what it looks like. And I noticed this as a kid, you go to a restaurant in, in, in America, when you go there, the, per, the the server brings you your food and your bill at the same time. And right now, if you've never been anywhere else, this is normal for you. It's like you get your food and your bill. They want you to eat and get the hell out. And it's all about eating and getting the hell out. In Italy, uh, it's rude to give you the bill unless you ask for it. And they take their sweet ass time bringing you each thing and you chill. It's like two hours for, for lunch. And I got frustrated at first when I went there as a kid. I'm like, oh, I want to. And then I realized like they're just, they're here to like connect and hang out right. and whatever. It's a social thing. Yeah. So that's a very, very important part of health and fitness fanatics who are unhealthy in their pursuit of fitness. Oftentimes this is the one thing they completely throw out the window. It's like, uh, no, it's all about working out. It's all about diet. And they're not connecting with friends. They're not connecting with family. They're not socializing because they're afraid they're going to lose their gains. They're afraid they're not going to be ripped or whatever. Not realizing that their health is suffering as a consequence. Well, I noticed too. We didn't uh, we didn't plug any of our sponsors and, and supplements and talk about biohacking shit. Yeah, like it's all all these things minuscule. don't. A lot of these things don't cost you any money. It's just that uh, they get overlooked. They just and, take effort. And, and and our society always wants to jump to like whatever pill or whatever cool t like the even the way the questions worded that how you know, it's not really expensive like yeah none of these things cost money you know it takes time that takes it. effort you mm -hmm. know but you know it's a it's something that we've lost sight of i feel like as a country sometimes